the poster session was great because it was such a different variety of topics and people had you know talking about projects that they were working on trying to get people involved in the projects that they were working on the black poster is the one that i did it was inspired by um heather ford's book um i found I read it, um, I was a bit reluctant, to, not reluctant to read the book, but it, you know, it's sort of any academic book, it's a bit like, oh, it's going to be quite a hard slog to get through. But it's actually really, it's not written as an academic textbook. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's obviously an academic style, but it's, it's really engaging. Um, and the way that she kind of talks about um, the process of creating the page that eventually became the Egyptian Revolution page. Um, it's quite kind of pacey and it's very like, it's really engaging the way that she wrote it. And so I found it quite like a bit of a page turn of what was happening next. She interviews a lot of the editors. Um, some of the editors remain anonymous, you know, and she tries to find out, a lot of them just stopped editing after a particular point of time. So, um, so she, she tries to find out a little bit more about why they stopped. And, you know, and this is sort of over an intense period of sort of 20, 30 days of editing. And the book actually inspired me to do a bit more editing than I do, which is virtually nothing. So I actually got off my ass and made a few pages after this because I think the, the, the whole point of it was that, you know, things don't happen on Wikipedia unless someone actually does them. So it was like, right, Kelly, make some pages. So that's what I did. It's Interestingly, it's a celebration of Wikipedia, but it's also a critique. She talks a lot also about some of the issues and about how how can um, pages that are supposed to be developed through consensus, um, and she points out ways that particularly through this page creation um, failed in terms of things being uh, changed from being uh, the revolt to revolution while the the consensus was still the discussion was still kind of happening on the on the talk page so anyway read the book it's it's a really good book um so when we were thinking about doing applications for um wikimania i thought i don't want to um apply to do a talk because i don't feel i have enough I don't know, knowledge about the project to even stand up and talk about it. But I thought I, this would be a nice way to dip my toes into Wikimania by creating a poster. So what I wanted to do was show the page history from the start back in 2011, right up until now to sort of um, visualize the, the frequency of edits and the volume of edits. Um, and then I wanted to zoom into the period, particularly around the revolution and the sort of the main time frame that Heather concentrated on in her book. Um, I wanted to show the sort of intensity of the editing over a period of one month, um, and also kind of acknowledge some of the editors that um, that really, you know, like some of them were actually in Egypt at the time, and um, you know, speaking out wasn't such a good, a easy or good thing to do. So, um, sort of, you know, there's, I, I think heroes are not the right word but you know these people who are actually um, trying to find out information also really aware of having to find sources so they reached out to um, Al Jazeera to try and make some of their images available to put on commons um, you know so that they were actually all doing the right thing and they were also trying to educate kind of this flood of new editors that also wanted to go in and have their say so not only were they trying to create content themselves but they were also trying to um, maintain the page um, that was kind of being bombarded at the time, which I imagine is going on right now with um, some of the pages around Israel and Palestine, like trying, you know, all of those editors trying to protect the integrity of those pages um, in events that are happening in real time. Um, so what I did was I, I, I know that um, Wikimedia provides quite a lot of tools to extract data, but I like to work within R, which is probably um, in some cases not a great thing because it's probably easier, but I just like it in terms of the workflow. So I won't describe what I did, but I, um, I just extracted all the page edit information um, from the history page. Um, and I did it in a really hacky way, but um, I just scraped the timestamp, the username and the article byte size. So then I could calculate the size of the actual edit 
how many edits were made in a day and the size of those edits, um, how many edits and the size of edits were made by each username, and the sort of date of the first and last edit of each of that kind of top editors as well to kind of see like how long, um, you know, if you're in the top 10, how long are you actually editing for? Um, I used a tool called Rvest, which scrapes um, data from the history pages. So it just basically pulls down an HTML page and then I pick out all of the different kind of HTML elements. Um, I used a, a, like a kind of uh, scripting ecosystem called the Tidyverse. Um, and I use a tool called Deplier for just doing the tidying and the restructuring of the data and just doing little simple calculations. And I use a tool called ggplot2 um, to do all the visuals. And then I kind of got the, um, got the graphics into uh, a kind of presentable, and then I chucked it into um, InDesign just to do all the layout and sort of more the typography. Um, the poster can be found at that link. And then I've also put all of the um, code if you're an R, R user up on GitHub. Um, but it's all of the other um, posters. Uh, if you just sort of Google poster session, not Google, go into Commons and look up poster session, Wikimania 2023. So the top is like literally uh, the day of the first edit to the day of the last edit. So in 2023. And then if you, I don't know if I can zoom in here, I just might go to just look at the desktop version. Um, you can zoom in and have a look at, um, so I've got like little green bars for bytes added and then bytes deleted. So you can kind of see like, and that was total in a 24 hour period. So you can kind of see sort of the intensity. There's like small edits and then all of a sudden come on, someone comes along and deletes heaps and then someone either comes back and restores it. Um, so you can kind of see that and you can kind of see, can you see this now? Yeah. So um, this is sort of like the page is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then there's sort of like a bit of a, you know, a cull. And that's kind of, there's there's obviously people who come in and then just try and delete the whole page and then it's restored and things like that. But you can kind of see that there is this kind of, um, kind of periods where a lot of content gets added, gets added, gets added. And then there's a big edit, like a kind of cull. And those edits are usually done by some of the people who um, probably were, are much more involved in the topic, involved in the page. They were editing it for a really long time. Um, but it's kind of nice to see like these sort of intense sort of periods, particularly in that first sort of few months. Um, and then I just looked at page, the number of page edits per day, um, sort of in a month period, just zoom back out a little bit. Um, so you can see like at the peak around January 30th, sort of the, the amount of editing that was going on. And that was sort of the period that um, these sorts of protests, which was called like the Friday of anger. And then there was a day of um, a day of protest. So there's all these kind of themes on each day to, and the protests were getting larger and larger and larger. Um, and then here is kind of like a, a kind of, it's sort of very similar to this one, but it's um, just sort of looks at, you can kind of see this big sort of cull that happened at this period. So it's kind of like lots of facts get accreted, 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 you know, it's building, it's building. And then someone goes, right, I've just got to clear this article out of all of the rubbish. And we're going to actually try and get it back down to, um, you know, get rid of some of the more the superfluous information. And then that, that sort of, size of articles sustained sort of for the rest of the period that was sort of quite still quite um you know the events were still kind of happening in real time at that period then i wanted to look at okay out of the top sort of um heather interviews all these different editors um particularly a person named the egyptian egyptian liberal whose whose name's never sort of revealed and another person named lahas and I think Akazi is, is a really well-known editor. I don't know if any of you know him or know of him, um, but he's a just a generally well-known editor. Um, and he sort of came on board in the early days as well to try and help out. Um, he's based in America, and I think Egyptian Liberal 
is based in Egypt and I think Lahas is from Egypt as well. Um, but I just wanted to show sort of how many edits they were actually doing. Um, these kind of were kind of these sock puppets. One was based in Poland, another one was based in America, and they kind of like either added a lot or deleted a lot. So they were kind of, and then I think it was a lady named Ord who was um, really responsible for getting a lot of um, images on the commons um, of the protests. So she was um, liaising with um, a lot of journalists to sort of say, can we, um, could could we could you release your images under Creative Commons? Could we put them on the Commons just so we can have images on the page that um, aren't just phone images or you know they're actually from a reliable source? So she, it was um, part of the coordination of a lot of these people that the article kind of got written and uh, written from a you know um, I think Heather pointed out as well that a lot of the sources initially um were all things like from the new york times from the washington post like they wanted to get western references because they felt that that would make the article more um author authoritative <laughs> um what was really interesting was um so people like the egyptian liberal and lee house who were so heavily involved right at the start kind of just stopped editing after a particular period like lee house um, Heather talks about his last edit being made sometime in 2011 and then he obviously came back after she would sort of pulled a lot of the data to do this final edit and what I found was really interesting I don't know what happened but um, Akasi did like did not do any editing and then just did like an addition literally the week that I pulled the data so it was kind of quite strange but anyway he came and um, added something to the page. He hadn't looked at it or edited it for a really long time. Um, so that was just to show, try and show like the top 10 page um, um, contributors to the page. So one was like the total number of page edits and then the number of days between the first and the last edit. So yeah, so that was my poster. <laughs>